So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the cucumber capital growers selling up uh, because of Brexit and the energy crisis hits Britain the vegetable industry. So this one's pretty um, pretty grim for many reasons. Um, this is a case of farmers effectively selling up because it's just not worth it for them. It's just not worth it. Uh, huge areas of one of Britain's biggest salad growing hubs will be replaced with housing estates as growers give up in despair and cash in on their land. So in the UK, food prices will continue to rise as we start to produce less. So that means importing more of these types of food, which will normally be more expensive than homegrown produce anyways. That's only if we can find a seller for the same produce too. Um, we're going to we're gonna have to convince more exporters to deal with all of the export paperwork um, slash you know UK import paperwork when they can probably sell to more local consumers. Also, sterling constantly dropping will not help a nation that's relying on importing food for its population. Um, there's multiple problems here. The Lee the Lee Valley, which um, also known as the cucumber capital and Britain's salad bowl, is one of the diamonds of the UK's embattled horticulture sector. The Lee Valley Growers Association, seeded through an area running across Greater London, Essex, and Hertfordshire, comprises of more than 180 hectares of or 450 um, acres of greenhouses run by 80 growers. So you know, not a lot of people for a lot of land. It's a huge area run by not a lot of people. They'd be uh, reliant on other people's work, so typically migrant labour, most likely those devilish Eastern European workers who are often demonised by the media, politicians, and of course significant parts of the UK population. And of course big man like Farage. But hit by Brexit, a flawed home office plan for workers, which we've talked about a lot, and now rising energy prices, more than a third of the growers have applied for planning permission to knock down 60 hectares of greenhouses to replace them uh, with housing estates, warehouses and small factories. Their application has been granted, so effectively um, what they're doing is turning it into um, industrial areas of housing. So that's the local housing allow allowing these farms to be built over or these areas to be built over. The energy crisis isn't fully caused by Brexit, but it has played a part in it. Um, the labour shortages, however, is a direct result of Brexit and a population unwilling to do this hard agriculture work. Without government assistance for British food producers, the largest hub in the UK's greenhouse sector could face extinction within the next two years. And that's, you know, that's not a long time, said Lee Styles, the LVGA secretary, to be concreted over by houses and industry. And once that happens, it will be... Um, it won't be able to be uh, put back how it was. We're at risk of losing so much of our food security. The energy crisis is just the nail in the coffin of the agricultural industry that's been battered by Brexit. The association has 80 growers and 450 acres of glass house, he said. 20 growers have permission for housing, representing 100 acres, and another 10 have permission to develop their 50 acres for light industrial use. So you have 30 out of 80 farmers ready to sell up here. It's almost half. Um, they're ready to just sell up... Um, and just give up on the land. What they'll do after, I don't know. Um, hopefully they get decent money for selling up their land. Um, but what that means is just food prices in the UK are going to continue to go up because of scarcity. The Lee Valley needs 2,200 workers every year. Um, and that's from, you know, 80 farmers requiring, you know, around two th over 2,000 workers. is crazy. Um, but I guess it isn't given the scale of the industry. And the companies were hit hard by Brexit. The seasonal worker scheme set up by the Home Office and DEFRA, which was meant to ease the problems, requires workers to uh, return home after six months. This means that in a season that runs for 10 to 11 months, growers have to recruit twice the amount and train workers twice to do the same job because they're going to have to leave after six months. You need another batch to come in ready. Stahl said our growers experienced a 40% shortfall in workers this year. The government's six-month rule results in many growers finishing with a completely different workforce than they started with, with some unable to compete the season due to a lack of workers. You know, chances are these people who come here for seasonal work, some of them wouldn't stay more than six months. Some of them come for the summer um, during, you know, their off time if they're students or whatever. But that's, you know, speculation on my part. But the ones that would stay long in the six months now can't. Um, you know, as dude pointed out, that means double training, but also you lose a lot of efficiency. The longer you're at a role, generally you get faster at doing it, but also you learn, you know, the best practices of how to do that role. Shortcuts, if you will. But if you're constantly chopping and changing stuff, you lose that efficiency. There was also another thing I remember reading about in The Guardian, I think it was probably last year, where if someone had to drop out of, you know, working in a specific farm or whatever reason, if they had to, um, you know, go somewhere else, 
they what they would do is they'll just get a family member to replace them they can call someone um from you know their home a relative a friend and they could just replace them you know pretty much instantaneously now you can't do that because you need a visa and all this other stuff um we spoke about the visa issues in the past before i'm not going to go into that too much but it's a very um shoddy system 40 of them representing 200 acres haven't planned this year said styles and another 10 who had 60 acres have ceased trading so you can see here that some of them are selling up others probably trying to figure out what to do those um, not planting anything won't make any money via a harvest. So I don't know what they plan to do, but greedy developers are always ready to buy up cheap land. Um, so you've got a, a load of farmers selling up. You've got um, another 10. So you've got 40, I think it's about half of them are planning to sell. Or no, 30 of them are planning to sell, right? Another 10 who haven't um, planted anything. Oh, sorry, I can't even do maths here. I'm going to lose my brain. Otherwise, I should have scripted this a bit better. Point being is that um, some of them are planning to sell. Some of them have got planning permission to sell. Others haven't planted anything this year. Um, another 10 have ceased trading. So that's the vast majority of them, I think, that's, that are not doing anything um, or that are getting rid of their land. Among them were four growers that previously cultivated one in every 20 lettuces eaten by British households. They have stopped growing them completely in the past two years. And it's kind of interesting, you know, Brexit officially happened in 2020. So, that's, um, so that two-year timescale would fit into the Brexit timeline. Um, that in the past two years they have um, stopped growing lettuces um, within the last two years obviously Brexit happened I don't know how much stuff you'll need to plant and kind of harvest the stuff but evidently you'll need stuff to do both because that's a lot 20 I don't know how much in terms of lettuce the British uh, consumer eats but um, one in every 20 is a lot while others who grew 100, um, 100 million sweet peppers, I'm a big fan of those, have this season been forced to cut their crop in half. 74-year-old Elvio Capullo and his wife um, Lugia, sorry, butchered those names, um, age 68, started their business growing salad leaves, cucumbers and herbs 52 years ago. That's crazy. And now they're getting up at 5.30 to try and make up for the shortfall in workers. You know, they'll go down on their hands and knees, cut the parsley, um, says their son, 48-year-old Tony, who now runs the 11 acres of seven glass houses. It's dirty work, but they know they have to do it. All of the lettuce growers in the process of selling their nursery, style said, is pointless planting a crop if you're not confident of securing the labour to pick it as you will simply have to throw it away. And we've spoken about that a lot as well. Um, and, you know, you're in a situation where you've got, you know, people who are elderly. Um, I think it's fair to say, seven, yeah, 74 and 60, I'm going to say definitely elderly, you know, doing essentially, um, you know, hard, hard agricultural work here because they can't get the staff in. That's madness. They've also been hit harder than most industries by the huge rises in gas prices because they have to heat the greenhouses. The largest input cost for growers used to be uh, labour followed by energy, she said, as uh, Stahl said. But now it's energy followed by labour. Half of the growers did not plant when vital supplies of gas for greenhouses soared from 30p to um, to a, a firm. I'm not sure. That's probably a typo. In January, it's now hit four pounds a, a firm. No, a firm is some sort of measurement. Um, so it's gone from a 30p a firm, wherever that measurement is of gas, to four pounds. That's that's more than ten times increase. In the 14 years that I've been at this job, this is the worst I've ever seen. 90% of our members are family are family businesses, traditionally employing 2,500 people. We have only we have only one large corporate. The result of the government scheme, he said, was fewer British growers, lost jobs, more imported food, more food miles, an increased carbon footprint, and greater climate change. These are all things that you know are key points in this video more and more problems coming from this horticulture growers in the eu receive state aid we of course don't receive eu money at all we used to they would have they i think they would have done in years gone by um the eu subsidies but the british government are changing those subsidies rules and they've lowered the amount it's down to the devolved governments but significantly less than what we than what they got as eu members um he said the, the uk has been losing large slices of its salads and vegetable market to producers in spain and morocco who don't have to use ga gas to heat greenhouses and who are more who are just four days by road from here so you can see that may, maybe this industry doesn't come naturally to the uk that's why they have to spend so much on um gas to heat up the greenhouses compared to spain and morocco which are obviously one countries so evidently this is not as natural a process maybe they use the gas to kind of extend the season for these kind of uh, crops which isn't the best environmentally um but also you know us having to ship stuff from morocco and spain isn't the best environmentally either 
Groves received notification from George Eustace, the Secretary of DEFRA, the then Secretary of DEFRA, I guess. In late July, they must pay immigrant workers a minimum of £10.10 10 an hour. Um, Big George had denied that the minimum wage would rise to £10.10 10 an hour at the National Farmers Conference in February, Stahl said, and then you turned on it just four weeks later. So they, they were told that they wouldn't have to pay this minimum wage to um, migrant workers and then they were told they had to which would ruin their planning you know that is higher than the national minimum wage which the government is now enforcing under the seasonal worker scheme but our growers also have to provide accommodation for them which um of course comes at a cost but at the same time like evidently they either can't get british workers in or if they try and increase the wages to pay british people more it just wouldn't work out for them there could however be an even greater national impact said grower tony capillo um, who had four hectares of greenhouses in the Lear Valley. A card-carrying Tory Pi member, which is a big facepalm moment in my opinion, who voted in the leadership election, I wonder who he voted for, he warned the next occupant at number 10, it's not going to be about people having to pay more this winter for fresh food if many growers are forced to stop producing it, they're going to starve. You know, you might see a massive amount of food scarcity in this country because of this. A spokesperson for DEFRA told The Guardian, we're aware of the challenges facing farmers from increased input costs, particularly energy, as well as their concerns regarding seasonal worker pay. Um, that's why we brought forward a 50% of the BPS payment to help farmers right now. So I think that's probably the subsidy. They're paying more money up front, but on the back end, you're still losing out then. On top of the fuel duty and VAT cuts and freezing the business rates multiplied to reduce bills. We've already boosted the number of visas available, blah, 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 blah. Nothing really too major to help out these industries, in my opinion. I know they did have the um, energy scheme for businesses, but that's based around um, you know, significant amounts of government borrowing, which I, I still, from what I read, not gone far enough. Um, but what you're seeing is farmers essentially giving up and selling up the land, which... Um, Great, it's great short term for them, I guess, because they can sell up, make some money, maybe retire, or figure out what next in their lives. But for the country, it's this is a disaster. You're talking about losing a massive amount of food security, being far more reliant on imports, especially as the pound continues to nosedive. Um, it's not doing that badly against the euro, luckily. Um, but given the fact that we are so reliant on the EU for so many of the inputs that go into agriculture, and also let's not forget that. Um, the lower the pound goes, the harder it will be to attract migrant labour into this country as well. Let's not forget that, because a lot of the migrant labour who come to this country to work, let's not forget that, they work really difficult jobs here. That money that they make won't be worth as much when they send it home inevitably. So what that means is it's not worth their time coming here. They might get better offers from um, the EU, maybe even the United States, who knows. Um, they have, you know, they have global options here. Lots of developed countries require um, seasonal agricultural labour. There's going to be a ton of options for these people. The UK will look less and less promising, especially with this weird six months rule that they've put in place. But um, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.